it's Jack. And in this video, I'm gonna teach you one powerful thing that you can do to attract a committed relationship. Thanks to all of you who've subscribed to this channel. We've actually had near on a thousand new subscribers just this week alone. So if you haven't subscribed, please just go ahead now, subscribe and be part of this journey with us. Now, I wanna distinguish something off the bat, that the kind of committed relationship that I'm talking about in this video is not the traditional relationship that maybe your grandparents had, you know, maybe even your parents had, or maybe you have had previously in your life. I'm talking about what I call a conscious relationship, the new kind of relationship, and this has to do with two people that are committed to their growth, and two people that wanna use relationship to deepen, and to become more of themselves, what I call essence, to become more of the essential self, more of who they really are. And that's a very particular way of orienting to relationship. And it has a different set of dynamics and a different set of possibilities. So I just wanna distinguish that right off the bat. Now, the reason you might be interested in this kind of relationship is probably the fact that you're watching this video right now is you are someone who wants to grow and you are someone that wants to be more real, true, authentic, the kind of real you. And you might want to learn, as I do, and a lot of us want to learn, how to really bring that fully into relationship. Because the kicker is relationship is probably the working surface, bar none, to this deeper kind of development. Right, that relationship has a way of showing us where we're limited, where we're wounded, where we're playing safe, where we're using defenses, and it won't always be pretty, and sometimes it will be quite messy, but you can use relationship as a way to really wake you up. So that's the kind of relationship that this video is all about. Now you might have had the experience of kind of burning through relationships that maybe they don't really go anywhere or they hang around for a while and then they don't stick and you might be left scratching your head wondering why is it that I can't have a relationship that lasts and one distinct possibility as to why this might be happening is because there's something that you haven't integrated in yourself that you are seeking through relationship so let me just lay something down I'm not saying this is 100% true it's see if it seems true in your experience, but that which you have not integrated, you will seek in another. That which you have not integrated in yourself, you will seek in another. So let me give you an example. I've often coached really uh, responsible women, women who have a great career, who know how to balance their checkbook, who, who handle their finances, who save, who make investments, um, who just make good financial decisions, and who basically work first and hard and probably a lot of hours, and they kind of play second. And sometimes they will have a pattern of attracting in relationship guys who are what? The opposite. They're more carefree, they're more spontaneous, they don't spend, spend so much time thinking about money and saving and how much things cost and whether they're gonna uh, put money aside this month. And sometimes that can create this dynamic where the woman is feeling frustrated. She's like, why is this guy not showing up? Like he's talking about a trip, but he hasn't booked the flights. He's not gonna pay for the hotel. Like what's going on? And it can have uh, the woman really in her masculine in this situation. She's kind of taking care of business. She's holding it all down and he's kind of being, you know, carefree, playful, and uh, she can't really lean into him in this situation. That's one example. It might be the complete reverse. You might be, you know, a carefree global nomad gypsy soul who's bouncing around, who finds it hard to land in one place and create roots and stability. And so you are unconsciously looking for that in a guy, a guy to kind of make you stable and root you down and basically have some access to the energies or propensities that you don't tend to have access to in yourself. Now you may say, well, Jack, opposites attract. Why is this a problem? Well, it, it, it's a problem from the perspective of your own development, right? Yes, it's true that people can find the reciprocal of them and secure a long-term relationship. The challenge is it's not very dynamic. And you might get a sense of why, because it's kind of like we've kind of constellated the relationship around this sort of dynamic that I'm the responsible one and you're the carefree one, right? Or I'm the nomadic gypsy and you're the foundational roots. And of course, we're gonna have different propensities. We're not trying to make everyone the same. It's just pointing out that if you need that person for that specific reason, it's, it's like once your soul really learns how to metabolize that energy, that relationship may run through. That relationship may have reached its conclusion, 
right? Because it's sort of like you were together for a season to try and learn something from one another. Sometimes you don't learn it in one relationship and you go through relationship after relationship. So what I'm really encouraging you to do is to slow it right down, get your journal and just look at, take an inventory of your relationships and, and just notice if there are some patterns that emerge. There might not just be one pattern. There may be two or three dominant patterns or more. But you might start to notice, huh, yeah, when I'm in this kind of energy or this way of doing life, I tend to attract this kind of energy or this kind of guy. And what you might be wanting is something that's longer lasting than a relationship for a season, which is a sort of soul attraction relationship where your soul is attracted to someone because they have something to teach you and you have something to teach them. And it's, it's a tricky discernment because obviously in a lifelong partnership with someone, you're going to learn lots of things from each other. But it's not like there's this one dominant thing that I have to learn from you that when I learn it, maybe there's no longer the, uh, the dynamism and the attraction in our relationship because it's kind of like we completed our work together. Now, if you're still with me at this point, thanks, because this isn't the easiest thing to explain. And it, you might be asking yourself the question, well, how would I know that on the front end of a relationship, right? Like I'm getting to know someone. How do I know if it's like a for a season or for a lifetime or for a long time kind of relationship? And it might be that you have to run a little bit of, of uh, relationship time to start to make that discernment. And it might be that once you've completed a lesson, life doesn't need you to learn that anymore. And it starts to open up other relationship opportunities. Um, a good way to approach this is to notice when you get in a relationship, like what's the driving reason? Sometimes people get into a relationship because it equals security for them, right? They can't feel secure on their own, so they always need to be in relationship. And again, I'm not making that wrong. Some of those people can be the most beautiful, loving, caring people. It just might be a, a sort of a place of unawareness that keeps you in the same kind of frustration pattern in relationship. Right, that you need a relationship to feel secure, so you get attracted to someone who feels really secure on their own, not necessarily needing a relationship, and then it sets up this dynamic that isn't the most fulfilling dynamic, that you need the relationship to feel secure and you don't feel needed by them. Right, so in that situation, what you would go to work on is how can you build your own foundation, your own roots, how can you spend more time on your own and like the company you keep, how can you stand in your own weight, on your own two feet, and take care of yourself right? Because otherwise there can be this sort of unconscious thing of I need a relationship in order to, to be taken care of. And again, plenty of relationships exist in the world in the more traditional model where that is exactly what's going on. I just don't know if that's what you want. If it is, chapeau, French for hats off to you. That's great. Go do it. But if it's not for you, that's why I'm putting this video in. Because for most of you, I think you're now at a stage of your development where you're wanting to be real. You're wanting to relax your wounds. You're wanting to open your defenses. And, and to do that, you need to notice what is the dominant relationship constellation that's happening. What is the thing that if I owned it fully in myself, if I allowed myself to own that energy, to drop my judgments about that energy and include it, right? Whether it's being playful or serious or thrifty or generous or cerebral or embodied, right? Whatever that quality is, if, if you can start to own that for yourself, you may well notice that you start to be attracted to a different kind of person and a different kind of relationship where it's less a relationship like I need you to complete me and it's more I'm whole in myself. Sure, I still have my edges. I'm doing my work. I'm not a finished article, but I'm, I'm good. I'm whole. I like myself. And from that place, I'm noticing what I want in relationship. And it might be that there's then a bit more similarity between you and a partner, right? That rather than being at opposite ends of the spectrum, there's actually some ways that you can show up where you're on the same wavelength more easily. And that can create more opportunity in relationship than if you're constantly looking for the opposite because it's a thing that you haven't included in yourself. So even just now, take a moment, reflect on the relationships that you've been in. And if you got really sober, like really sober, really objective, imagine you a third person, as in you are treating yourself like a client, right? Imagine that you're coaching yourself and, and you are now a client of yourself. What would you be saying? What would you be noticing? And you sometimes have to, to, to take a while because we kind of got to get a little bit deeper. I'm not just talking about, you know, I always tracked a guy of, you know, this color hair or this type of height. It's like, what is the deeper energetic quality that is hard for you to own? Now, here's the, here's the 
the sort of counterintuitive thing. You don't often need to be super drawn to the world of development and sophisticated about your understanding of development to see this. You could probably ask uh, someone who's known you from earlier in your life, like what's the thing that's kind of hard for you, right? Is it roots? Is it wings? Is it spending time on your own? Is it spending time with other people? Is it working too hard? Is it working too little? Is it caring about money too much? Is it caring about money too little? And it, it's having an, an, an honest and sober self-assessment, not to be down on yourself, not to invite the inner critic in the back door, absolutely not. No judgment here, just to see it clearly, lovingly and compassionately that, ah, yeah, there's a thing that I, I kind of struggle to include and I kind of, if I'm honest, I've been hoping that maybe I'd find that in my relationships at an unconscious level. And I'm now gonna go to work on that thing. It won't necessarily happen overnight. It's, I'm gonna give myself permission to learn. It may take weeks, months, years to fully integrate this thing. I'm also not gonna stop having relationships, but I am gonna slow it right down at the beginning. And before I create ideas about who this person is or where this relationship's going, I wanna really see huh, what is the thing that's kind of going on here? Maybe you're a really independent woman and you attract dependent guys, right? Maybe you are, are fiercely strong and you attract emotionally heart-centered guys, right? And that if actually you were including more of that energy, you might then attract the kind of guy that's actually a better fit for you, right? Because if you're a, a, a strong woman, you might need a guy who's not actually only in his heart, who's also strong and decisive, right? That that's a good partner for you because that actually allows you to relax and be more, as the vast majority of you watching this right now will wanna be more in your feminine, more in your feminine essence. In a sense, what we're actually talking about here is becoming a more integrated human being who has access to a range of different energies, who's not fixated, who doesn't have a fixed sense of self that, oh, I'm this person and that person is this kind of person and that's who we are, right? That's a fixed mindset. We're talking about a growth mindset where you realize that who you are is an unfolding thing. It's not a fixed thing. It's, it's dynamic. Who you're becoming is someone that you may not even know yet. And that is a very different context within which to engage in relationship. So this is an invitation to wakefulness. Um, I definitely welcome your questions and comments below this video. I'd love to know how it's landed with you or what if there's a particular quality that you maybe notice that either you haven't owned in yourself or you seem to particularly attract in guys. Put that in there. I'd love to know what that is for you. Uh, again, if you haven't, please subscribe to the channel and if you click the little bell, you will also get notifications as soon as new videos come out. I'm Jack. Thanks for being with me.